Today, I have a beautiful 1995 Toyota Hilux Surf. This one's diesel powered, four wheel drive with the wide body. It's fitted with a brand new lift kit and it's absolutely stunning. The Hilux Surf was sold in Japan from 1983 to 2009. Originally built as the passenger car version of the Hilux truck, it is loved worldwide as a rugged and reliable off-roader that's easy to live with every day. You may know this as the 4Runner, and although new ones are no longer sold in Japan, the ones from the 90s have a cult following here. The first generation Hilux Surfs were basically Hilux trucks with a bed on the back. While the third generation is your typical 90s SUV, albeit a cool looking one. For me though, it's the second generation that just hits the spot. It maintains that rugged truck styling while keeping with the retro design. A lot of people claim that the second generation is prone to engine problems, but they're probably referring to the gas models. This engine is known as an exceptionally reliable, straightforward turbo diesel with 130 horsepower. Starting with the front, you have a chrome radiator grill with the chrome emblem matched with its chrome bumper, further accentuated with its chrome bull bar. All very cool. Also cool are these fog lights. Now, I do love this design, but I'm not a big fan of how the license plate is the centerpiece of it all. It makes it lose its luster a little bit. This is the wide body model, the difference with the standard version being these integrated fenders. These allow you to get fatter tires while also giving it a more robust look. Moving on, I lifted this bad boy up 2 inches. I go into further detail in the first part of this series, but basically it's 2 coil springs in the back, 4 longer shocks, and a lateral rod for added stability. With the added height, I upgraded from the stock 15s to these new 16s, then put on these BF Goodrich all-terrain tires. They're called KO2s, and I highly recommend them for anyone who wants off-road tires without compromising your daily drive too much. All in all, this increased the height of the vehicle by about 10 centimeters, giving it a lot more road presence. Adding to all that, we installed this colored film, yellow in the front and gold in the back. These running boards sound hollow, but they're actually built quite sturdy. Now, they're not really necessary with the stock height, but they come in handy once you lift it up. I also love how you have a continuation of the chrome design with the side mirrors, the door handles, and of course, the rear bumper. The rear is arguably the most controversial part of this vehicle. Not because of the look though. I actually love the shape and the overall design, especially with the spare tire. The problem is accessing the trunk. You first flip out the spare tire, which can be held into place with a pin. You then roll down the window with the driver key or from a switch inside. Finally, you reach over to unlock it and release the handle. That's a lot of steps to just access your trunk. This could be especially annoying if you're stuck in poor weather conditions. An indicator in the dash will appear if the tire is not properly set or the door is unlocked. What's annoying is that this lock is independent from your automatic door locks inside and can only be opened and closed manually. This is especially irritating when you forget to lock this but you're already inside your car. That means you have to come back outside and then you realize, oh, my window is closed so I have to open my window again and then lock it. There are a couple of advantages to the system though. One is that you can throw your stuff inside without opening the whole trunk like this. The second advantage is that you can actually drive with the rear window open, something I do all the time. The rear window can be opened and closed on the fly. And yes, we filmed from the trunk for some epic shots. What's funny is that in the owner's manual, you have a ton of obvious warnings and disclaimers, but there's nothing about how to drive properly with the rear window open. Imagine if you're on the highway with a lot of loose baggage and it all comes flying out. One thing you can't complain about though is the trunk space. There's a ton of depth and you have a good amount of height as well. You also have these hooks that are good for strapping things in. Plus, you can also fold the second row forward in case you need more space. It's not quite big enough to sleep in unless you have the rear door open. Jumping inside, the first thing you notice is that the seat is very close to the floor. It does take a bit of getting used to, but so long as you're not too tall, you should be able to get quite comfortable. Because of this unusual setup, you can't raise or lower the actual seat. Instead, you adjust the seat cushion with this knob. And it's the seating position that defines this vehicle. It really makes you want to tackle the roads. However, lifting it up does hamper the experience a bit. That's why some people love to keep a stock. Up front, the dash design is well built and simply laid out, but could benefit from some color. 
This vehicle is part-time four-wheel drive. You can actually find the instructions up here on the sun visor for how to switch from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive and also low-range four-wheel drive. Switching to H4 is pretty simple. All you have to do is press this button. According to the sun visor, you could do this at speeds up to 100 kilometers per hour. For extreme terrain, you can push the lever up to get into low range. This Hilux Surf has the old school parking lever. To turn it on, all you do is pull. To turn it off, you press the button and turn to the left. Then it slides back into place. These cup holders are nice, but they cover the AC controls when in use. Up top, there's a card holder. Next to that, you have the sunroof controls. Waving like an idiot is not recommended. Now, as part of the safety precautions, you have to press this close button down while holding down the switch in order to close it. Fortunately, you can do it while you're driving. Getting into the second row, this is where it feels like a truck. It's not awful, but it's not incredibly comfortable either. The seats are reclined a little bit, but there's no room for adjustment despite all that space in the rear. Creature comforts are pretty limited as well. You have pockets, this ashtray, and AC controls with vents underneath, but there's no armrests or cup holders. Now, let's go for a drive. So Sweet! Okay, okay, driving the lifted up Hilux Surf. Now, I drove this before it was lifted up, and it's much lower than your conventional SUV. In that sense, you kind of want to hit the curves a lot harder than you would normally. And you kind of can with this vehicle. It does handle pretty well. Now, by lifting up, you do sacrifice that element of the drive. However, on the flip side, you get a much more commanding seating position and of course, greater off-road capabilities. For the shocks, I had a choice of either going with hard shocks or medium shocks. And after a lot of consideration, I went with the medium shocks. And because of it, it wafts a little bit. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not in control of the vehicle. It does take a little bit of getting used to and some people may not like it. However, this ride is incredibly comfortable. It feels so nice. It feels like you're just floating a little bit. And I, I might be exaggerating a little bit, but you really don't feel any of the imperfections in the road. And so if you're someone that's considering lifting up your vehicle and you have the choice of the shocks, really do consider the medium shocks because a lot of people will tell you, oh, you have to get the hard shocks, you know, or else you're not gonna be able to go off-roading properly. Ah, I think that's bull -ass. Now, in terms of handling, because it's lifted up, obviously you do lose a little bit of the precision. It does kind of take a little bit more to turn. This is a great engine, especially considering how old it is. And I get up to speed pretty quickly. You're not going to really be struggling for power, even going up hills. Don't get me wrong, it's not a fast car, but it's not as slow as you would imagine it to be. Flooring it here, you can actually feel the tires a decent bit. You have to remember that they're all-terrain tires. The tires are great, they look cool, and they're very capable off-road, but the drawback is that it does hamper the drive a little bit. You get a bit of road noise, and the acceleration slows down just a little bit. All in all, this is a different experience when you lift it up. Completely. That seems like an obvious statement, but there's a lot of cars that if you lift it up two inches, it doesn't make that dramatic of a difference. But with this vehicle, because it's so low to begin with, when you lift it up just even two inches and you get those bigger tires, yeah, it's gonna make a significant impact on the drive and your seating position and your mindset of how you're going to drive it. One of my final thoughts of this Hilux Surf because it's based on the truck, you have to compromise a bit on the comfort, but otherwise, it's super cool looking. It has great off-road capabilities, and it's loads of fun to make it your own. Thanks for watching part two of this series. Stay tuned for part three coming soon. Peace out!